Hello and welcome to Book and Paperweights. I'm Jocelyn, and apparently I'm completely incapable of sticking to any kind of filming schedule, so I apologize for the delay on this video. Alright, so for today I decided to do a book haul video, which will probably be the only one I do for a really long time. When I buy books I tend to only get like maybe one or two a month, so that doesn't really lend itself well to doing a book haul video. But there was a 20% off sale at Half Price Books, I recently got a bonus at work, and I have no self-control sometimes, so that's how this happened. So yeah, I decided to start off with the um, books that I got for Christmas. So. Here goes. First two, they're not novels, but they're coloring books. Game of Thrones and Sherlock. So yeah, I got those for Christmas and I'm having a lot of fun coloring those in. I like grown up coloring, it's fun. Next, I got from my sister, in my humble opinion, a journal to vent about why people are like that and why all the stupid things they do are so obvious to me. From not using their turn signals to believing they're the center of the universe to sweating the small stuff to ignoring the fact that they're all just trying to make our way in this insanely crowded world, but some of us are doing it a whole lot better than others. Basically, it's just, it's, it's a journal with fun quotes about people being rude. So you can rant and vent, which I do a lot of in life, which I guess is why she gave me a journal to put it all in, so I stopped just barging into her room to rant about whatever the daily thing is that enraged me. I like being angry. It's probably not a good thing, but it makes me happy, so. So next on the list, uh, I got from my mother, and it is Reclaiming Eve, The Identity and Calling of Women in the Kingdom of God. It's by Susan Burden, Carla Sunberg, and Jamie Wright. Um, this is a biblical theological look on the position that women hold basically in the world and what, what it should be to be a woman, and I'll read the back of it for you. For many of us, it is Eve's sin that defines her. Truly, when the church focuses the entire problem of sin and the destruction of relationships on women, we have a problem. Inferior, second best, marginalized, Christian women often view themselves negatively and feel that no matter how hard they try, they are never good enough. Reclaiming Eve sets the record straight. Tucked into the pages of scriptures is a blueprint for women that sets them to free to serve Christ alongside their brothers as a full as full partners in building God's kingdom. Read this book to move beyond your self-image, your past, and your circumstances to discover who God created you to be, a woman chosen to beautifully reflect Christ. It's a nonfiction book. Um, I don't really read nonfiction very often, really at all. I'm not a fan of nonfiction, but that one actually sounds pretty interesting and it's pretty short, so I think I might actually like that one. It sounds pretty interesting and cool. So. Alright, next on the list is Daughter of Smoke and Bones by Lonnie Laney Taylor. Laney Taylor. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce her name, and I guess I'll read the back for you. Who is the Daughter of Smoke and Bone? From Master Storyteller and National Book Award finalist Lonnie Taylor comes a sweeping and gorgeously written modern fantasy about a forbidden love, an ancient and epic battle, and hope for a world re- That doesn't really tell a whole lot about what the book is about. I don't know a whole lot about it. I just know that I've seen a lot of people, especially on booktube, reading this series and they love it and I figure, you know, if that many people think that it's worth reading, maybe I should go ahead and pick it up. So I did. Next, I got at Half Price Books. In fact, the rest of these books I got at Half Price Books. Throne of Glass by Sarah J Moss. And this is another book that I picked up basically because so many people are reading the series and think that it's amazing. And worth it and I'm like you know not that many people can be wrong so pick this up and I'll read the back for you two men love her the whole land fears her only she can save them all in a world without magic an assassin is summoned to the castle she comes not to kill the vicious king who rules from his throne of glass but to win her freedom if she defeats 23 killers thieves and warriors in a competition she will be released from prison to serve as the king's champion her name is Helena Helena Alina Zardothian. The crown prince will provoke her. The captain of the guard will protect her, and a princess from a faraway land will befriend her. But something evil dwells in the castle, and it's there to kill. When her competitors start dying one by one, 
Selena's fight for freedom becomes a fight for survival and a desperate quest to root out the evil before it destroys her world. It sounds pretty interesting. This is actually the first that I've actually read the back of the book. Sounds cool. But yeah, pick that one up. All right, next is The Midnighters by Scott Westerfield. I actually picked this up because when I saw it, it looked like an uglies book. I was like, wait, is there like a fifth book in the series? Like, um, it's not. Um, it's not connected to that at all. But it is by Scott Westerfield, so I'll read the back for you. Strange things happen at midnight in the town of Bixby, Oklahoma. Time freezes. Nobody moves. For one secret hour each night, the town belongs to the dark creatures that haunt the shadows. Only a small group of teenagers know about this secret hour. Only they are free to move about midnight time. They call themselves Midnight. Sounds actually kind of interesting. It's looking like a short read. It's Scott Westerfield. I know I like his writing, so I got that too. All right, next, Bead by M.T. Anderson. And I picked this one up mostly because I saw a review of this several years ago. The first time I've been in a store, well, it's been in a store. So, um, I'll go ahead and read the back for you. We went to the moon to have fun, but the moon turned out to completely suck. When there is a constant stream of games, shows, chats, and ads feeding directly into your brain, does the world make sense without it? Titus and his friends have never wondered about the streaming until a hacker causes their feeds to malfunction, leaving them stuck on the moon with nothing but their own thoughts for days. If that weren't mind-boggling enough, Titus meets Violet, a girl who has made the conscious decision to fight the feed. This smart, savage satire depicts a future that is unnervingly close to the here and now. It sounds pretty interesting. I think it does at least. I've been wanting to read it for a really long time, so I was really happy to see it in the in half price book. So next is Margaret Peterson Haddock's Just Ella. Haven't read this one yet. I don't know why. I mean, it's been out for a while. A lot of people love it. Um, it's basically a Cinderella retelling without the magic. I will read the blurb for you. Gather round, children. Let's... Princess. Nobody can stop those rumors. People would rather believe in fairy godmothers than think that you took charge of your own destiny. Like every commoner in the land, Ella dreams of going to the ball and marrying Prince Charming. But after she's chosen to marry the prince, life with the royal family is not the happily ever after that Ella imagined. Pitiless and cold, the royals try to mold her into their version of a princess. Ella's life becomes a meaningless schedule of protocol which she fears she will never grasp, and Prince Charming's beautiful face hides a vacant soul. Even as her life turns to misery, the stories persist that Ella's fairy godmother sent her to the ball. How else could the poor girl wear a beautiful gown, arrive in a coach, and dance in those glass slippers? But there is no fairy godmother to help Ella escape the deadening life of the castle. Can she do it on her own? Margaret Peterson Haddock's reconstruction of the Cinderella legend without the magic, how a commoner could have married the prince, is a story as richly fascinating as the classic tale. So I picked this one up mostly because I was going to pick its sequel and or companion novel um, and then realized that they were part of the same universe so I also picked up um, Palace of Mirrors. Let's read the back for you here. Somewhere in the world I have a tiara in a little box. It's not safe for me to wear it. It is not safe for me to even tell anyone who I really am but I know. I have always known. Cecilia knows that she's not just another peasant girl. She is actually the true princess in hiding until the evil forces that killed her parents are vanquished. A commoner named Desmia is on the throne as a decoy. As she gets older, Cecilia finds it harder to study statesmanship and palace protocol secretly at night and then pretend she has nothing on her mind other than scrubbing the gruel stains out of her best apron by day. Cecilia knows that it is time to take charge along with her best friend, Harper. She flees to the capital city, determined to reclaim her throne and face the danger head on. When Harper and Cecilia reach the famed Palace of Mirrors, they discover complications. Princess Desmia believes an entirely different version of the story. Acclaimed author Margaret Peterson Haddix returns to the charmed world of just Ella, where a princess in hiding and a pretender to the throne discover that nothing is as it appears. It sounds very much like a Margaret Peterson Haddix book, and I love her writing. It tends to be geared towards a slightly younger audience, but I mean, what are you gonna do? Nothing. Alright, so the next two books I picked up more for the collector's aspect of it, unless because I actually want to read them. You'll, you'll see. Um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, books one and two. Um, there's three books in these, in each book. Um, there's a third book that also has three books in it. And I will read you the authors. In book one, it's John Vornholt, Arthur Byron Cover, 
and Alice Henderson. Book two has Christopher Golden and Nancy Holder, Diana G. Gallagher, and Pierce Askren. I'm not going to read the uh, blurbs of all of these, um, but I'll tell you which books are in these books. Uh, the Coyote Moon, Light of a Living Rerun, Portal Through Time, Halloween Rain, Bad Bargain, after image. I have quite a few Buffy books. I've, I haven't read that many of them, but I like having them because I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer, so I just like having Buffy stuff. Um, it makes me happy, so I picked these two up. Got all my books just scattered around me. Next is books eight and nine in the Fruits Basket series. I have books one through seven. I'm collecting the entire series because the anime just doesn't answer all of the questions that I want it to. So I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying reading it and I'm really excited to have the next two books in the series. I have no idea how many there are. I think it probably goes up to like at least 15. I don't know exactly. Maybe up into the 20s. I would have to look it up but um, at the moment I have up to book nine. It's a manga. It's 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 a manga series. I guess I should probably tell you what Fruits Basket is about. Fruits Basket is about a girl named Toru who, uh, due to some circumstances, is living in a tent in the forest when she stumbles across the uh, household of the most popular boy in school. Um, and he finds out that she's living in a tent and she ends up living in his house with his guardian. And then she finds out that his family has this curse where whenever they are hugged by somebody of the opposite sex, they turn into an animal of the Chinese zodiac. It's really funny, but also really heartfelt. There's a couple of moments where you're just like, oh. But it's it's cute. It's just it's fluffy and just adorable. And I I, I love fruits baskets. <laughs> I recommend watching it. I recommend reading it. It's right up anybody's alley who just likes who doesn't want anything too heavy. And yeah. And last on this book haul list is a book that I'm really excited about because I um and that's Winter by Marissa Meyer. I love this series, so I was really excited to finally pick up the final book. It's been out for a little bit now, so I'm. I'm really excited about it, um, and I will read what it's about to you. Princess Winter is admired by the lunar people for her grace and kindness, and despite the scars that mar her face, her beauty is said to be even more breathtaking than that of her stepmother, Queen Levana. Winter despises her stepmother and knows Levana won't approve of her feelings for her childhood friend, the handsome palace guard, Jaden. But Winter isn't as weak as Levana believes her to be, and she's been undermining her stepmother's wishes for years. Together with the cyborg machine, Cinder and her allies, Winter might even have the power to launch a revolution and win a war that's been raging for far too long. Can Cinder, Scarlet, Cress, and Winter defeat Levana and find their happily ever afters? Fans will not want to miss this thrilling conclusion to the Marissa Meyer's nationally best-selling Lunar Chronicles series. I'm really excited about reading this. In fact, I think I'm going to start this now just so I can procrastinate um, finishing City of Fallen Angels, which technically I'm reading right now, but I'm also not. I'm not enjoying it, so I'm kind of I haven't read it. But I think I'm going to read this one now. I'm really excited about it. No one doesn't have Simon, so I'll just be happy with Winter because no Simon. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys had a great Christmas, and um, I will post all of the uh, books and their authors in the description box below. Just like, subscribe, maybe, maybe, um, and uh, maybe post in the comments. Perhaps a recommendation, maybe request a review of one of the books here or a book in general. So I'm going to sign off for now once again. Hope you guys had a great Christmas. And and uh, I'll see you maybe in the new year.